Tough Lab. I'm Gwen. And I'm Marty. And Marty, do you know what today is? Oh God, you already told me I forgot. I did not tell you. You already guessed. <clears throat> oh, I did? Yeah. Ladies dancing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is ladies dancing. We have a very popular dancing lady. Do you know who it is? Uh, Christy Mack. Does that help? No. It's Anna Pavlova. Oh, yes. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> oh, well, you're going to by the end of this. <laughs> okay. Where do you think she's from? Pavlova? Um, Russia, Ukraine area? Yeah, somewhere around there. She's from St. Petersburg, Russian Empire. Ah, uh, the Empire. Isn't that where the movie Anastasia first took place? Uh, I think so. Okay. Someday, when I have the setup that I want, we'll be able to just Google things at the same time. <laughs> but until then... So her homeland, St. Petersburg, Russian Empire. Mm-hmm. You ready to uh, get into a little bit more? All right. Description. She is a Russian prima ballerina. That is the second highest title awarded to women. Prima ballerina, Asoluta being the highest. No. Oh. Which is also <laughs> very rarely given. So she okay. is like cream of the crop okay. ballerina. I'll bet she had really gross feet. Yep. <laughs> Those aren't her feet. <laughs> Uh, she did have highly arched feet, which was not desirable in ballerinas. So she made specialty inserts for her shoes. So when she was on point, she mm -hmm. wasn't putting all of her weight onto her big toes. It was more evenly spread out. Okay. Which a lot of other people thought was cheating. But in the end, she ended up revolutionizing the ballet footwear. Okay. To help protect ballerinas' feet. Okay. So that, she that wasn't in my fact list, but it was something that happened. Okay. Since you brought it up. So life! She was born... B. February is two, right? Yeah. <laughs> she <Yes>. was born... <laughs> February 12th, 1881. A while ago, all right. Prematurely. Okay. When she was nine, her mother took her to an audition for the Imperial Ballet School. She was rejected due to her age and sickly appearance. One year later, in 1891, she was accepted. So one year and a little bit of food later, she was accepted. A little bit of food later. <laughs> she was teased by her classmates and often called nicknames, such as The Broom. <laughs> she had very long limbs, so that kind of makes more sense. Okay. The, the Broom. <laughs> yes. She practiced constantly because ballet was very difficult for her when she would learn a new technique or pose, anything, she would spend hours practicing it, mm -hmm. saying, no one can arrive from being talented alone. God gives talent, work transforms talent into genius. She, studied, stu she also studied under many of the best teachers available to her at the time. Okay, so she's definitely committed. In 1899, at the age of 18, she graduated Imperial Ballet School and joined the ranks of performers. Her first performance drew praise from critics, particularly the great critic and historian, Nikolai Bezobrazov. All right. Is how I'm going to say that is pronounced. Bless you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> or working under one of the most influential ballet masters and choreographer, a French ballet dancer, Marius Petipa, Anna flourished as a ballerina. She had her own style, one that didn't pay too much attention to the academic rules. This harkened back to the time of the romantic ballet dancers and ballerinas. Okay. So if it asked her in a dance to do a specific thing, if she was unable to do that, she would replace it with something else. Okay. So she wasn't doing the dances as they were intended to be. She was doing them so she could still, she was dancing in a way where she could still play that part, mm -hmm. but not the way it was created. Okay, which I'm sure A, revolutionized things, and B, I'm sure it got a lot of booze from critics. Mm, we'll see. In 1906, she was finally given the title Prima Ballerina after a resounding performance of Giselle. 1906? Yep. So she was 24? 25. One of the two, either one. That's super young. Mm -hmm. She was, man, she must have been really good. Yep. Okay. She is most renowned for creating the role of the Dying Swan, which she performed as a solo. Okay. She created that. Okay. That's cool. Yep. After the first Paris season of Ballet Russesse, 
she left and formed her own performance company, becoming the first ballerina to tour around the world with her own company, including going to South America, India, and Australia. Dang. Right? Okay. This is her. Okay. Uh, historical contributions. On her tours, she also learned and performed many ethnic dances of the places she went. One Uday, I'm guessing Shankar, was inspired by her and revived a long neglected art of dance in his native home, India. Okay, that's cool. It is cool. In South America, she influenced a young ballerina named Ruth Page, who went on to choreograph a large scale production of The Nutcracker. All right. While in London, she inspired the career of Valicia Markova, who went on to become a prima ballerina, a saluta. <laughs> wow. So she was definitely, she was doing it. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Death, Anna toured the world for 20 years, bringing ballet to millions who had never seen any form of Western dancing before, until her death in January 23rd, 1931. She was 49. Anna came down with pneumonia and was told she needed an operation to live, but the cost would be she could no longer perform. She refused the surgery, saying, if I can't dance, then I'd rather be dead. She died of pleurisy 20 days short of her 50th birthday. Why do I feel like she's probably just as stubborn as the goose-punching grandma? Probably. Yeah. Her remains are located in London. Okay. Really? They didn't, she didn't go back to St. Petersburg? That's kind of surprising that she wouldn't have gone back home after doing so much. Well, she ended up residing in London. Okay, all right. Uh, but there is controversy over her remains belonging in Russia or left in London. <laughs> Basically, Russia is like, they're fine there, and London's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very controversial. <laughs> so, uh, there's a gentleman, I did not include him in here because it's not confirmed whether or not it was her husband, stated in his will that if there was a chance for his remains and her remains to be brought back to Russia, mm -hmm. that that's what they would prefer. Basically, it just became a, well, she's already in London, just leave her there. She seemed like her, her life was her craft. Legacy. Uh, there is a pavlova dessert, which I have linked below. Uh, it's a cake. Ooh, I do like cake. Yes, the pavlova cake. Did she ever eat pavlova cake? Uh, I believe it was created after she had already <laughs> okay. died. I'm not 100% certain though. So we have the Jarobi Tapatio, or as we call it, the Mexican hat dance, <laughs> gained popularity outside of Mexico when Pavlova created a staged version, which she, which she was praised by her Mexican audiences. In 1924, Jarabe Tapatio was made Mexico's national dance. Hmm. So she popularized the Mexican hat dance for the rest of the world. All right. <laughs> How wild is that? <laughs> How have I just never, I've never heard of this lady. She did so much stuff. Mm -hmm. In 1980, Carl Fabergé, the fancy egg man. The, I was just gonna say, the fancy egg guy? Yeah, the fancy <laughs> yeah. egg guy. Licensed a collection of eight inch, of eight inch full lead crystal wine glasses to commemorate the cemetery of Pavlova's birth. A full set contained 12 glasses. Okay. Eggman. <laughs> Not to be confused with the Sonic Eggman. Yes, this is the fancy Eggman. <laughs> Fun facts. A prima ballerina is the head dancer of a dance company. On her deathbed, she asked to see her The Dying Swan costume one last time. Her debut was the ballet La Fila Bagarde. This is the first one she was in? This is the first performance. Okay. That's what I got. So in the links below, uh, there'll be a link to what I used for the information on Anna. Also, the different types of ballet titles and what they mean. Uh, Marius, one of her teachers, the people that she- Inspired. Inspired. Okay. Uh, the Pavlova dessert, the Mexican hat dance, and should, uh, just a link of just fun facts. We should, we should make that cake. Okay. I would just reason I'd, to eat you, more cake. Well, you make the cake. <laughs> Put way too much frosting on it. I'll have yeah. some and you can have the rest. Okay. That's how it works Deal. in this house. <laughs> she was a very interesting lady. Yeah. She, she Incredibly interesting. Definitely did her own thing. Did a lot of good. She was a very inspiring lady. It's a shame she died so young. Well, and died with such, such controversy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I hope I can die with that much controversy. 
All right, join us tomorrow for our next day of the 12 days of Christmas. We're getting close to the end. I don't even remember what number we're on anymore. <laughs> 10 Lords of Leaping, I believe. Maybe. Oh God, okay. Maybe. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>